Okay, look, sometimes I go away between the periods of October and December and nothing really happens. I'm just playing matches ahead of the January transfer window. Not the case this year. Three players have left us or are leaving us. £150 million worth of sales. Oh, and on top of that, I have signed this guy. He joins us in January. If you want to go down now below the intro and leave a price prediction for Neto, please do. How much do you think I had to spend to get this guy in? 25 years old, loves important matches, super consistent. He joins us in January and I'm pretty bloody excited. Oh, and just one more minor thing that happened while you were away. Uh, Chelik won the Ballon d'Or. Yeah, the Ballon d'Or, I, he's good. I'm surprised he's won the Ballon d'Or with us, given the last 12 months, but we will take that. Anyway, we need to run the intro. I've got more to catch you up on, loads of matches played, and on top of that today, we have Man City at home, Ludogorets away, and then a trip to Anfield. Yeah, another big triple header. Lots to talk about. Let's run the intro. Today, folks, by the way, is episode number 107 of Parks of Prem. I hope you're buckled up. I hope you're ready. Let's talk about the sales that I've just mentioned because they're fairly big ones, aren't they? First and foremost, Mosquera leaving the building for £50 million. This guy, once upon a time, was really highly rated by our staff. I think he finished second in the Next Gen Awards. And at 22 years old, maybe there is still room for this guy to develop. I've given him, though, you can see here, lots of game time. I have played this guy a lot over the years. And truthfully, I feel like he joined us and really didn't have that much room to improve. You kind of look at his development over his time since he joined the club three years ago. It's not that emphatic for a Mosquera. And when, of course, Alex came into the team, it kind of knocked him down the pecking order further. And ultimately, when you compare these two players, Alex is just he's ridiculous, is Alex. Alex is 20 years old. Here is the head to head comparison. Naturally, when Mosquera got a bit of 50 million, can really turn that down. Elsewhere, the David Saga is coming to a close. He is heading off to Benfica. Did not get nearly as much as I was hoping to get for this guy. £30 million is ultimately what we've had to settle for. You've already seen it. I've signed a replacement for him in Neto. Uh, £30 million for Sinkule. Again, predict what I paid for Neto down below. And of course, if you're doing the maths there, £30 million sale, £50 million sale. Well, Jack, you said you'd sold £150 million worth of players. Who the hell have you sold for £72 million? Uh, Karim Kanate. £72 million to Valencia. I feel like I've absolutely scammed them here. He turns 32 in four months' time. We signed him on a free transfer a year ago. Of course, Valencia is the team that we signed Diop from. And as a result of that Diop signing, they've struggled this year. Of course, they are now without their main goal scorer. They weren't able to replace this man. And they've decided that Canate is the man to replace him. Just as a reminder, I signed Diop from Valencia, I think, for 98 million. They're spending 72 million of that. On the man in blue. Yeah, for one hundred transfer AI is better this year. Apparently. Anyway, those are the sales. Let's talk about this man, because I am pretty excited about him. Neto is signing for us for £25 million. If you predicted 25.5 million, you probably went down below the video and just entered in the answer now to the question I left in the intro. This guy is absolutely phenomenal. I feel like he's the player that Sinkule has a slim chance to develop into. And of course, given the fact Sinkule is leaving for 20, no, 30 million pounds and Neto's joining us for less than that, it just feels like sensible business. This guy is really, really good. He can also play at centre mid. He could play I guess in an emergency at roaming playmaker. It'd have to be a pretty big emergency. There is a temptation to maybe train him to play centre attack in mid. Nevertheless, I think we can all agree that this man who my staff did think is world class is an absolute bargain. And speaking of bargains, you might remember Tulaski. I wanted to sign him on deadline day and then he didn't want to talk to me. I've agreed to sign him now. He joins us at the end of the year for £5 million. Massive, massive signing this guy. Really like the look of him. Just amazing value as well at £5 million. You might have also spotted one more signing, Callum Goldsmith. Uh, yeah, he was released by Borussia Mönchengladbach. We sold him to them for £4 million. I was scared he was going to retire, so I've just signed him to stick him in the youth team, just, you know, to give him a bit of money and hopefully convince him not to quit his career as a footballer. Uh, we'll probably look to loan him out in January. Anyway, that is the off-the-pitch shenanigans. On the pitch, there has been plenty going on. Of course, last episode, we had a pretty successful triple header, all in all, I think. Since then, it's been a bit of a mixed bag. I think the most notable of all the results, to be honest, was the first game after last episode against Everton. They'd started the season really, really well. I was expecting a battle. 
they did not provide a battle. This game here finished 7 0. Diop bagged a hat trick. Yes, one of the most emphatic performances we've had at the Murphy part time in Goma Sports Complex. Worth noting, We've not lost in our new stadium in a competitive game yet. That's not to say we haven't lost, because as you can see here, we lost in both the Champions League and then the EFL Cup. There was a win against Chelsea in between, which was nice, but the EFL Cup to go out against Brighton was disappointing. This was a game here where we lost on penalties. It wasn't a great display, I'll, I'll be completely honest. Uh, I feel like on another day we win this game. I mean, look at the stats. Uh, we didn't score enough goals, but when you look at the stats, we should have scored more, shouldn't we? Oh my, I forgot how annoying this game was. Either way, uh, Carabao, not on the menu for this year. We've crashed out of this competition early the last few seasons. Like I mentioned, that win against Chelsea was nice. Diop got the goal there, and from there, we have remained unbeaten in our last seven games. A couple of them in the Champions League. A win against Man City was absolutely massive. The draw against Monaco, a tiny bit more disappointing, but we're still in a really, really good position. As for league games, 2-1 against Leeds was great. 2-1 against Nottingham Forest was nice. We got some revenge against Brighton with this 4-3 result before back-to-back 2-0 -back wins against Newcastle United and Southampton. Uh, one of these games here, this game here against Nottingham Forest, I've glossed over it. I do just want to point out two goals in the last two minutes of this game. Dominated the game, probably deserved to win it, but we had to do it in some style. That unbeaten home run very nearly came to a halt in this game here. So in terms of what all those results mean for our current league position, and indeed Champions League position, you can see we are 10th in the Champions League group stage, although we have got a relatively easy game against Ludogorets coming up today. Uh, they've not won a game yet. Really, we're only going there for the away day. And as for the Premier League, we are top of the table. We are the only team still unbeaten, although Man City in second are only two points behind them. We're taking them on to kick off things today. After that, a game against Liverpool, who themselves have only lost one game so far this year. Yeah, they're a good little team. You might remember Chelsea were in the relegation zone. They are having a little bit of recovery. They are now up to 13th. And from a general team performance point of view, things are looking really, really positive. I did see the comment section, some question marks over over Michael Bolton and some, well, recent displays at Roman Playmaker. I'm going to be honest, I don't really share those concerns. When I look at his form across this year, he's been very, very good. I feel like with the new tactical system, there's always going to be a bit of an adapting period. I feel like we're done adapting now. I mean, you can see here, he's played centre mid 15 times, three goals, six assists in the league. He's currently on a 7.3 rating, which is very comparable to when he's played at right wing back for us. I feel like he really is nailing down the Roman Playmaker role. And in terms of the goals, well, they have mostly been coming via Diop and Rojas. These two guys, they just have an understanding in the final third. Diop is definitely the more complete of the two players. Roger Rojas is just the kind of striker who's in the right place at the right time. Admittedly, he's not been on a particularly good run of form yet. And in fact, when you look at our strikers, a few of them have been struggling with form lately. It's been a few centre-backs and set-piece goals that have kind of kept us going on our winning run. I suppose when you look at the defence, if we want to find a positive here, ratings are looking really, really good. Afoni has just locked down the goalkeeping position now. The 24-year-old, formerly of Real Madrid, joined us at the start of this year. Wasn't sure if he'd start ahead of Haddad. Haddad recently agreed to have his squad status lowered from first team to backup. So he's starting to learn his place in the universe. That said, technically both goalkeepers are now listed as backup players for us, which is nice to keep them both happy, I suppose. But when you see the comparison here, Afoni has been improving a lot. And I think on the pitch, the performances kind of show the difference in ability. He has been very, very good so far this year. Don't want to say it too soon. I think we found our long-term goalkeeping option in Dennis. Now, like I said, we have got three matches to play today. The two league games, I think, are going to take the main focus. The Ludogorets won the second game. I'm probably going to do in a more recappy style. We're probably going to annihilate them. I am going to rotate the team. One game where we're not rotating the team, though, is this one here against Man City. We need to be at our very best. I suppose the good news for us is we can be at our very best. There is no one missing today. Everyone's fitness is really, really good. And that means expectations are kind of high. I feel like we should be winning this. We beat them in the Champions League already this year. I want to keep the unbeaten home record going. Okay, kickoff highlight immediately. Sometimes fills you with dread. Sometimes it fills you with confidence. Let's hope it's going to be the latter. D up with the ball already. We've got men on the attack. Alex, who's been a breakout star this year at right wing back, lays it to Rojas. I mentioned the fact he's been struggling for form lately. He's hit the woodwork inside the first 20 seconds. We do now have a corner, which Chelik's going to take. Huari's there. Nulti back to Rojas, who forces another save out the keeper. 
We've had a flurry of chances to start this game. We're looking very, very good. We have to hope we're not going to regret some of these chances missed as Rojas, who's been at the heart of everything we've done, goes down in a heap. For half a second, I thought we were going to get a penalty. The whistles didn't go. Okay, Man City with a free kick at the back. I made a lot of this unbeaten home record. It's got to come to a halt at some point. If we were to lose here, Man City would go top of the table by one point with the same amount of games played. Ourselves and Man City have looked a little bit of a cut above a lot of the teams trailing us, but the usual suspects aren't a million miles away. And well, we know how important it is just to keep winning and especially against the big teams, keep winning. Can we make something happen here? Alex Celic, the Ballon d'Or winner. I'm going to say that's why. It's only his fourth goal of the year, but he has got a lot of assists from attacking mid. I did see in the comment section of yesterday's video, a lot of people asking you know, about Mosquera, the fact I've kind of just ousted him for Alex. I feel like when you saw the Polygon comparison earlier and also the lack of development of Mosquera, you can kind of see why. I've decided that Alex is the future. And on top of that, uh, Alex has just improved so, so much and is actually performing in the match engine. The right back is becoming quickly one of my favourite players. He's he's like the Brazilian Ricky D. I don't know, you know, some people, you know, they say the English Cafu. No, this is the Brazilian Ricky D at right back for us. Anyway, Bolton, the former right back, is laying it forward to Rojas. There's options in the middle. He does not need them. Michael Bolton assists it. Is it going to count? There is going to be a check here. The roaming playmaker with a defence splitting pass. Is the goal going to count? VAR is going to check it. And the goal is going to be awarded. It has come 12 minutes in here. Bolton, roaming playmaker, finding a gap and threading the needle. What a ball that was. Rojas, had he missed that, I would have been annoyed he didn't pass to Diop. But it doesn't matter because he found the back of the net. I'll tell you what, the left side of the pitch of Man City is not having fun so far in this game. Look at the ratings for our right back, roaming playmaker, attacking mid and striker. So much of our players coming down this right hand side. And well, it could be happening again. Bolton, though, with a wayward pass. Now he does need to try and get back in possession as Dodge goes for a shot from range. I think the keeper, Dennis, maybe even got a touch on that there. We still have a corner to deal with. Dodge, by the way, is this Scottish striker who's absolutely phenomenal in this universe. Very, very good player in his own right. Hasn't, I don't think, had the craziest of seasons for Man City so far. And at least in this game here, he has struggled to shine. Misiak, is he onside? Did he time his run? I think he did. He's hit the crossbar. He probably should have scored. Here, by the way, is Willis Darge. Yeah, you can see. 24 years old. He's he's very good, isn't he? He's one of those strikers. You know, there's a handful of them in every save game. He's one of those. Right, Lee Min throw in to Ken. Back with Lee Min. The Korean left back inside. Rojas. Was that a shot? It was blocked. I'll let him off. I thought he'd shot wide there. It was actually on target, I think, initially. We do still have the corner here. Man United, by the way, 2-0 up against Tottenham. Manchester United, of course, who drew against last episode. They're not having the craziest of seasons yet, but a win like that could be inspiring for them. One thing that's not so inspiring was that shot by Alex. Quickly approaching half-time here. There is going to be five minutes at the end of the half. We've got a corner as well. Haaland with a defensive header. Rojas, though, there to try and keep the attack alive. Alex at right back. On this occasion, does lose out. But Manchester City clearing the ball away. No one there to do anything. And Alex just runs very, very quick. That was ridiculous how quick he runs in the match engine. I feel like our wingbacks have to do a lot of running. Alex is very good at that whole running thing, as is Rojas. He gives it to Celic. He shoots. It's in the back of the net. It's 3-0 before half time. The Ngoma Doma is an absolute fortress here. What a performance this is. 2-0 in the Champions League against Man City was a good result. 3-0 would be, well, it'd be even better. 3, three is bigger than 2. More, more news at... Four. Uh, what a goal that is. Celic, lovely finish. Keeper maybe should have done better. We did score three goals from four shots on target there, so I don't want to get too carried away, but they were very good chances. Going to give the players lots and lots of praise. Sneddon on, on a booking is a little bit concerning. I might regret this. I'm going to bring in Bailey Salmon at half time. I am a big Bailey Salmon enjoyer. I, I just like fish now. I've decided. Anyway, into the second half we go. I feel like the stress level is significantly lower than they were going into this game. This is a massive, massive game in the title fight. We knew at home, I think, with our record that we are going in as favourites. But to have performed like we have here is just absolutely fantastic. Diop, I'm going to take off. I'm going to bring in Mateus. Faye is going to come in for Misiak as well. I feel like the strength and depth that we have this year is absolutely unrivaled compared to previous years. We have the ability just to bring on match winners on off the bench at 3-0. I'm resting some of my better players here because I know that my replacement players can be equally as good. I am, by the way, 
noticing Guerrero, our former man, currently on a 6.1 rating for Man City in this game. He, he's remembered who he's loyal to today. Of course, if he now goes on to score, we don't mention that bit of commentary. Editing Jack, we edit that bit out if he scores in the last 10 minutes. Thank you, mate. Uh, speaking of which, here is... Guerrero on the far side, laying it inside to Idrego. Fade as well there, Bolton. Roaming playmaker, Bolton. He, he's had his right back era. We're now into the roaming playmaker era. On this occasion, I'll admit it, he has lost the ball for us there. And that's with Jeremy Pino. Options in the middle. That shot wasn't far wide. Four minutes left of this game. It's 3-0. This, this game's done, isn't it? I mean, a clean sheet would be nice to keep. It would be a fourth clean sheet in a row, by the way, if we were able to muster it up. Bailey Salmon, not a lot to do inside his 45 minutes here. Dennis to Huari. What a great play and display this has been thus far. I, I, like I said, I'd love to keep the clean sheet, but to be honest, even if we lose the clean sheet now, I'm willing to give the players a day off in training. Luda Goretz midweek is going to be an opportunity, I think, for the B team to play. As I said, it's all about the away day, really, I feel like with Luda Goretz. The match itself is kind of not the priority in terms of the content, which is a mental thing to say. I feel like the fans are going to be stood there chanting, we're only here for the away day, etc. Et uh, here for the away day. Only here for the away day. It, it works as a chant. I think. Pro probably never been done as a champ before. No, it definitely has. It's not that unique. Uh, either way, yeah, Ludogrets. Then Liverpool is the next game. I'm saying all of that. This game here, by the way, is still going on. Man City did just have one pretty blooming good opportunity to make it 3-1. I'm hoping we're going to keep the clean sheet here. I admit, I'm on a tangent. I'm having mad ramblings from the sideline in the dugout. The players are probably going to be distracted by it. Oh, it's funny, though. None can be distracted by it. What a save that was! Man City corner. They've got that big bloke, haven't they, to aim for? No one likes that big bloke. Oh, where is he? Can you see him? Erlen Harland in the middle. Huari's bigger than him, though. That's all I know. Huari, bigger than Harland. And then... <laughs> right, I, I'm laughing, because what's just happened there? Is he okay? Is he... Uh, I hope he's okay, Rojas. He's kicked the ball out of play having got injured himself. It finishes 3-0 here. I shouldn't be laughing at one of my players being injured, but that just looked funny in the match engine. Official confirmation with that result there that we are going to pull clear by five points at the top of the table. Of course, it's still fairly early days. There's still 23 games left this year. Manchester United got a very good win against Tottenham. That could have been a potentially tricky game for them. They've passed that test with flying colours. Arsenal won 5-0 as well to climb up to fourth. They are 12 points behind us, though. I feel like the top three are kind of running away a little bit. I laughed, didn't I? I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have. <laughs> Rojas is out for eight to 12 days. He's going to miss the Liverpool game. I, it was still funny. If you're wondering about the Italians in Italy, that sounds like a movie or something, doesn't it? They're having a lovely time. Diego, goal and assist in their most recent game. He's now got eight for the year, this guy. The 18-year-old is making the championship his bitch. I don't know why I said that. That was a very... That's, that's not like me. I don't know where that commentary came from. Diego makes me like that. It's the, I think it's the steely eyes. Celic, man of the match, by the way. Like I mentioned, he's not been scoring a load of goals this year. Five in the Premier League. He only had three prior to that game, but he has got nine assists as well. Takes him to 14 goal contributions in 15 games. In terms of average ratings, does he have the highest in the league? He doesn't, uh, Erlen. Harland does. Of course he does. And if you're wondering about Gilliland, uh, he's playing for Stuttgart. I say he's playing. He just played seven minutes in a 5-0 win for them. He's not developing as much as, as I was hoping he would, but at least they are playing him lots. Anyway, we are going to play a heavily rotated team for this next game. We're taking on Ludogorets, who play at the Ludogorets Arena in Bulgaria. I don't know for certain. I assume Bulgaria's on Google Maps. We'll find out together. It's been forever since the last away day. Let's go do one. So for today's away day, we are heading to a country I have actually been to in real life. We're heading to Bulgaria, everyone, and we are heading to Lidogorets, which I can't believe I've actually managed to find on the map. Definitely didn't check it before I hit start record. Even then, I think the ability to zoom out and zoom in and find the stadium that quick, that, that deserves a like on the video, if nothing else. Yeah, you might have spoiled it on the left. I did have to check where Ludogorets played. Uh, I, for whatever reason, just assumed they played in the capital of Bulgaria, Sofia. They don't, and look at this. They've got a car park. They've also got next to that a dog park. P dog park to Prem, anyone? Probably not. I mean, in terms of where the stadium is, it, it does seem to be just in a relatively small kind of city. May maybe a town, even. Uh, either way, I've not actually checked yet if there's any street view options. I might be about to be disappointed or... Maybe I'm about to be very pleasantly surprised. We can go look at the car park. Here it is. Tell you what, it's hillier, isn't it, when you turn it at the ground? Uh, here is the car park. 
There's the stadium. I know what you're thinking, Jack. What does the dog park look like? That's that's what I'm wondering. Here is the dog park. L lovely barbed wire. Now, the stadium is this building to the right here. Uh, I was expecting some signage or something. There is a Ludogorex minivan. I like to believe that's the minivan that the team used for their away days. I mean, in terms of stadiums from the outside, it's it's not the most beautiful we've ever been to, but it's, it's quirky, it's unique. Like, some of the stadiums we go to are, like, in the middle of, like, you know, redeveloped, built-up cities and stuff. This is just in the middle of, like, a random town, isn't it, in Bulgaria? I kind of love it. By the way, you don't need, even need to pay for like a ticket for a match. Just turn up here, look under the fence, you can watch the game for free. This street view footage is a little on the older side. Ludogorezk, of course, in very recent years, have played a bit more in European competition, so I suspect they've probably built up their stadium. In fact, it does look like from the satellite view, they have updated it. I did notice a couple of dots on and around the pitch. Are any of these more up to date? This one is up <laughs> it's upside down. I didn't think we were playing in Australia today. I mean, there was an attempt to do a photosphere. We're playing in the Europa. <laughs> Everything about this is cursed. Okay, good news. There was another pitch that is more up to date. Yeah, okay. The stadium looks a lot more modern, doesn't it, in the year 2021. This club, I don't know much about them. I assume they've had quite a lot of investment because the longer are the days gone of the minivan and also being able to watch the game for free through the fence, they've actually built a proper football stadium here. Obviously, it's not the biggest, most intimidating stadium in the world. It is quite co it's quite nice, isn't it? I mean, you've got the commentary booth and, I guess, bits for pundits up there. I assume with them playing in the Europa League in real life that they do have to have some media facilities, and that's what that is there. I did notice there was one more dot in the stand. Can we look at a picture here? Oh, my word. Okay. I don't know if it's because it's really saturated. Is this, this is like halfway through the work being done, I think, because the, some of these stands have changed since. This is like midway through. This looks very, very nice. Does anyone else li like this stadium? It's just cosy. It feels very green and nice and just... I like it. I, I feel like I'm not meant to like it this much. I did also find one more picture here of Ludogorets' stadium. Yeah, I feel like I'm not meant to like this ground, and yeah, I absolutely love it. It's just very calm, it's quirky, it's in the middle of bloody nowhere. Uh, I don't even know what to give the Hoof Farmer Arena. There was a dog park next door, and a decent car park, and I thought we saw the story of the stadium developing. I, I'm going to give it a really good score. Okay, the Lidigarek Stadium, or the Hoof Farmer Arena. Love this stadium. Love how much it's changed over the years, and we've been able to enjoy it. I'm going to give this a very good away day score, and it might be controversial. Seven and a half out of ten. I just love the aesthetic. Anyway, saying all of that, we are now playing them in the Champions League. I'm hoping we are going to batter them. Uh, ahead of this game, I was told it was going to be snowy and very cold. Uh, the forecast has changed in the last half a day, so if you did catch that earlier during the earlier part of the video, the fact that it said it was going to be snowy, it's probably not going to be snowy. I'm sorry to disappoint you, I'm sad about it too. Ludogorets, by the way, are yet to win a game in the Champions League. We're doing this in a lot more recappy manner. We've got Anfield and a much more, well, potentially challenging game next. This should be one for a few players to stat pad. I mean, so far in this game, nothing's happened, but... We're on the attack here, and as soon as I start to speak, something has happened. Alex playing at left-back today has cut in, and Dimitrov, the Bulgarian youngster who we signed in the summer, he's got an assist on home turf. I say home turf, I don't think he was playing Ludogoretsk before, but you know what? It's familiar to your territory for him. Alex stepping up, and Ryazo was about to just come back and say, nothing's happened in this first half, something's happened before the break. And having got that first goal, maybe the floodgates are going to open. Just looking at the stats here, we've dominated the game, but without really creating enough in this game. This is a game that we should be winning handsomely. We have looked better, and we did have a couple of half chances, but, well, we've been gifted something here. Mateus should score, didn't score... I mean, I need to get the second goal sooner rather than later just to remain calm. But this game is kind of going how I thought it'd go, with the exception of the fact we've only managed to score one at the break. Now, because we've got the game against Liverpool at the weekend, I don't really want to have to bring in any of the big guns. There are a couple of more rotating players I could bring in in this game here. Obviously, players like David, 
don't really feel like I need to bring in anymore. Given the fact he's leaving the club, his development is not my focus. One man who I might want to bring on at some point is Wayne McKenzie, the young Scottish bloke we signed on deadline day. You know what? I'm going to bring him on here. Mateus hasn't had the best of game. So, uh, I'm going to move a, a Faye to striker. McKenzie, come on down. Show us what you can do. Okay, I feel like if we get the second goal, then I can kind of vanish again and do a more recappy commentary. We need a goal, lad, to reco. Hasn't got it there. I don't know how he's missed. He did, it wasn't even saved. He's just shot it wide. feel like the match momentum really <laughs> sums up how this game's gone. How we've scored one is the only thing I'm confused by. 17 minutes left here. It's still 1-0. I'm holding off making any changes because I just believe that the players on the pitch rush should be capable of getting the result. So far, well, I guess they're technically getting the result. It's just not how I imagined we'd do it. We might have another chance here, though. McKenzie on off the bench. What can you do? The youngster crosses it in. Elreco wasn't going to miss from there. 2-0. Job done. Uh, this is this is awkward. This is awkward. I thought 2-0, job done. Don't need to worry about things. They've just scored to make it 2-1. I don't want to blame anyone in particular. Haddad, question marks here. I mean, Haddad playing in this game, but playing him in European games where we rotate things around. That yeah, He's just forgotten how to use his hands there as he's dived, hasn't he? I didn't want to have to do this. I feel like I kind of have to do it. I'm going to bring in Burks, though, just to get in some fresh legs. Celic, on you come for a reco. Uh, elsewhere, Sanfei, off you come for Diop. I'm bringing on the big guns up top. We need another goal just to be comfortable. This is one of those weird games where it could go one of two ways. We either now end up bottling this and drawing 2-2, two -two, or we scrape a 2-1. Neither of them are particularly satisfying. Of course, the main prerogative at this point is just to get the three points. This was meant to be a straightforward game, and it's weird, because at 2-1, you might be thinking, oh, it's been full of drama then. Not really. It's one of those games where there's just not been that many highlights. We've scored from a few of the chances we've been able to craft out. They've not really done anything besides score. Diop, on off the bench to score, really showing that we have been restraining our performance today. Had I played the main 11, I think we'd batter them. I've been kind. And a bit of a weird game comes to a close. We absolutely dominated the game, and yeah, it was one of those games where the floodgates just never really opened. And when they got one back for a moment, you're worried. But we've managed to get the result there. We were able to rest up a fair few legs. Nice work, everyone. Now, Liverpool await us. That result there climbs us all the way up to second, actually, in the Champions League. I think we were down in, like, 10th before, weren't we? It's kind of crazy how close things are. There's still two games left of this group stage. Uh, I am going to use this as an opportunity to remind you... I absolutely hate the new Champions League format. It's stupid. Our final two Champions League games actually aren't until towards the end of January. Two games against German opposition, Bayer Leverkusen, Bayern Munich. They're in... Well, where are they? 21st and 25th. Bayern Munich are in 25th in the Champions League group stage. Uh... They have got a game in hand, mind you. If they win their game in hand, they go up to 18th, and it suddenly doesn't look quite as bad. And actually, as for ourselves, we've shot up, actually. There's loads of teams behind us with games in hand. I believe if we get one or two more points from our last two games, we are guaranteed a spot in the knockout round. So, job done, really. Get £2.4 million pounds for winning that game, which is always nice. And Alex, for a man-of-the-match display, I'll, I'll give him some praise. A goal for him there at right-back. Has one goal and six assists, by the way, in the Premier League as well. Did play the whole game game there, which is a little less than ideal. I'm going to rest him up because he's going to be back in the starting 11 for the next game. That match, four days away against Unai Emery's Liverpool side. You can see they've not won in their last three Premier League games. They're really going to want to beat us. Okay, game number three today, Liverpool away. Not an easy game by any means. Liverpool not having the best of seasons. They will be desperate to win this game here. Worth noting that yesterday in game, Manchester City managed to win 1-0 over Brighton. Not a convincing result, it has to be said. Bristol City off the bottom of the table as well with a win against Chelsea, who continue to struggle this year. Man City trailing us by two points. So a win here, important to just keep that little bit of a buffer that we earned with a big result last time. And in terms of of our team again pretty much at full strength a little bit of sad news Rojas still out with that pulled hamstring not willing to risk him in this game here means that fan favorite Sam Faye is back in the lineup I know there's gonna be lots of people happy about that hopefully he's gonna turn up in this one I've been playing him in a lot of Premier League games to be fair but his starts have been limited a chance for him to maybe bag a second goal of the season okay Liverpool away never an easy game by any means the fact there's a kickoff highlight here feels
fills me with dread. I feel like we've had a couple of these in today's episode. Liverpool in possession, playing in their red kit. We, of course, still playing in our home kit. And, well, the good news is, even if we were to lose this game, it's away. We can keep the unbeaten home streak going for as long as possible. But a test for us today... Gonna be interesting to see how we fare. Alex Slime being back in at right back today. Of course, he was playing left back midweek for the Ludogorets game, which I still maintain was one of the weirder games I've ever done in an episode. It just felt weird as I was playing it. It just didn't really play out how I expected, but not in like an entertaining way either. That's entertainment though. Sam Fay scores inside a minute. Is he onside? That is a big, big question. VAR is going to check it. It's going to review it. The goal is going to count. Mention the fact that maybe he could get his second goal. It did not take him long. Rojas, of course, had that really early chance against Man City. He wasted. Bolton, what a pass that was by him. Defence splitting opportunity and a nice finish to boot. Okay, well, if the floodgates were going to open after that first goal, it's not happened. Uh, yeah, half an hour into this game. It's still 1-0 to us. Only one shot on target for either team. It's not really been a classic so far in this game. I'm going to shout some words of encouragement, which have not gone down overly well, but maybe Chelik can make something go down well here. Bolton's gone down in a heap. Of course, Bolton, former Liverpool man at right back. He's got an assist already in this game. I was hoping for a penalty. It's not been given, but the ball is still in a dangerous area. Liverpool clear it away as far as Bolton again, and now Estrada looking to try and make a counter-attack happen. Liverpool with players surging forward left and right. The ball is back with Kane and... At centre back for them now. Roma, Nipan, Ryblen plays it for Testrada. One on one. And what a finish that is. In off the underside of the crossbar. That, that was quite good, wasn't it? Of course, Estrada is the Mexican forward, one of the best players in this universe. To be fair, Liverpool blessed with some of the best strikers in this football manager save game. And with a finish like that. Yeah, uh, that's a warning. We can't let them get one-on-one -on -one like that often in this game. And just for a reminder of how good he is, uh, here he is. Uh, I kind of just want to compare him against Diop. How does he compare with Diop? Is Diop, is Diop better? I think Diop is actually better. Diop's very good, isn't he? Ah, ah, hmm. Uh, Dennis is injured. <laughs> Her dad's on the bench, thankfully. I'm going to hope that's not serious. You know, early on in today's episode, I kind of formally announced Dennis as the number one. And now he's not here. I mean, he's not dead. He's just, he's injured. Let's hope that's not serious. Five minutes out of time at the end of the half. Suggests it might have been a longer term injury. Liverpool had a lot of players on bookings at the end of that half, I noticed. Four of them. At the break, it's 1-1. Wouldn't necessarily be a disastrous result. I'm hoping for a little bit more in the second half from some of our key players. Okay, Lee Min, corner. We're usually pretty good from corners. Can we be good from this one here? Not at least initially. It's cleared away. Sam Fay, though, going to keep it alive. Huari to Alex, the right back, bringing it forward. Hits it off the woodwork. Missy, I thought, was going to get there for a moment. Liverpool scramble it away. And, uh, I mean, I'm, I don't want to say his name too much. I don't feel like I'm unnecessarily bigging him up at this point. Alex really is at the heart of everything we do here, isn't he? We're on the attack again, by the way. Fay bringing it forward. One-on-one, -on -one, difficult angle. Players in the middle. Goes down in a heap. A very, very good tackle by Kane at the back there for Liverpool. You can see they've got three of their back four on a booking. Their ball winning midfielders on a booking as well. Liverpool are struggling a little bit to contain us, I feel like, and resorting to the dark arts, which with 35 minutes left of the game could make things a little bit challenging for them. Either way, they've got the ball here. Of course, now I've said that, they'll probably go up the other end and score. Fernandes to Pavlovic. So far, her dad has not been called into action. There might be a chance here, though. Nipan cutting inside, shoots. It's blocked. Kane to Galistu. His initial cross is blocked, but he's still got it. Lee Min, really, really good defending there. And then Misiak, what are you doing, son? Misiak is just daydreaming in the middle, isn't he? What was that? It was a shot in the end that's been deflected. It's still 1-1 here, by the way. I feel like I'm kind of going into this game and approaching things right now as if we're ahead. We're not ahead. We need another goal here, lads. Freya's free at the back post as well. Fortunately for us, it loops over. Okay, with an hour check play down, I'm going to make some changes. Misiak off, Mark Anderson on. Elsewhere in the team, Lee Min has struggled at left back, NDIA on Newcomb. Alex is on a booking. We'll bring in Mosquera for some fresh legs. I do have one more sub if I want to use it, but I think for now at least, we just need to hold on to it. There's still half an hour left to play here. Suslik bringing the ball forward for Liverpool on the far side. Kane inside, Anderson off the bench making a really big tackle, but then Celik loses out and Reblen has the ball in a difficult place. 
and finishes it like that. That is a sensational goal. I mean, it's hard to be annoyed, isn't it, when a goal goes in off the post like that. I will say, I don't know what Chelik's doing there. I mean, is that a tackle? I guess it's a tackle that he's made. Reblen picks at the ball here. You think, oh, we've dealt with Ings. Anderson forces him wide, and then he squeezes it, and the ball barely crosses the line. But it is in to give Liverpool the lead. I feel like at this point, I need to demand more. At this point, I'm starting to reg regret being so casual with things. We need to change some instructions here. We need to try and get the ball forward that little bit quicker. I want the players to get stuck in. We need to just rush Liverpool a little bit more, I think, when they do have the ball. There is 14 minutes left here to try and make something happen. I suppose there also comes a point here where I need to commit players slightly further up the pitch, and I feel like that moment is now. We are going to commit more of our midfield higher up. We're losing a little bit of that defensive solidity and risking it for a chocolate biscuit. Anderson to NDIA. Back to Anderson. Space in the middle. Shoots. It's blocked. It falls, I think, to Chelik, whose effort also is blocked wide. We've got 10 minutes to try and get a goal here. This feels like a big pivotal game in our season, this next 10 minutes. We need to show some resilience. The ball's whipped in. It's cleared away by Liverpool. And now I just look in the top left and think, we need a goal. And time is not our friend. It is not on our side. Of course, with us throwing men forward, we're going to leave ourselves open. But yeah, there comes a time in games where you need to take a gamble, roll the dice. We are doing that now. We have put all our money on attack. And we're going to hope it works out in our favour. As Liverpool have the ball at the back and lay it out to Pavlovich. We are pressing high. We are pressing hard. Liverpool forced to go long. NDIA mops up the pieces. Suari now with it. Could give it short to Ken, could look to maybe switch it himself. Instead, goes left to NDIA. He plays it down the line to Faye. It's across the line to Diop. If he's onside, it's a beautiful goal. That is the big crux of things now. Sam Faye scored earlier, could have an assist. The goal is going to count. It's 2-2. And I might live to regret it. I'm not taking our foot off the gas. We are going to stay on the front foot here and try and make something more happen. Lovely build-up play. NDIA's ball was nice. Faye on his weaker foot. Donning the captain's armband squared it. Diop has found the bottom corner. And, well, there's a chance. A draw would be good. A win would be even better. There is a few minutes left to try and make it happen here. Five minutes of added time. It's been an even game. We've had the better of the chances. Is there to be a late sting here? We've been bold. We've been brave. In the end, though, we're going to have to settle for a point. Sam Fay, man of the match. Now, the real question becomes, how bad was the Dennis injury. I'm going to hope it wasn't too serious. Uh, elsewhere, Arsenal lost against Aston Villa. That is a very, very big result there that sees them drop out of the top four. And yeah, a good point for us, I think, in hindsight, in retrospect. I mean, 40 points. We're still unbeaten. Let's look at the positives. We're still looking very, very good at the top of the table. Dennis has got a damaged neck. That sounds very serious. We'll send him to a specialist. Hopefully he's fine. Sam Fay, man of the match. We will give him some praise. And ultimately today, whilst that result wasn't perfect, of the games that we could have afforded to slip up in, the game against Liverpool was that game. At home against Man City, the kind of six-pointer game where there was a bigger chance of a point swing. It was important to win that one. Shame that we've lost our run of clean sheets in the Premier League. But nevertheless, when you look at this form we're still bloody good. Now, in terms of when we're going to be back next time, I'm not entirely sure, but one thing I promise you is we will be doing some wheeling and dealing and probably some signing. We've got £200 million transfer budget, £109 million in overall balance right now. When our players, I believe, officially leave, we then get the money added to the balance of all those transfers that we've already agreed, so that'll be interesting. Of course, next time out, Neto will be here. Let me know what you make of this signing. I like the look of this guy a lot. Anyway, folks, hopefully you enjoyed a second triple header in a row. We will be back with more Park Supreme action to end the week tomorrow. Take things easy. Have a lovely rest of your day. It's me, Jack, and I'll catch you again tomorrow. I'm out.